So I've been flying this DJI Avata 2 for the past, well, less than 24 hours, and that's all thanks to being 100% unsponsored by DJI. They aren't paying for this video, they didn't send me this drone combo, and most importantly, everything here was bought by me with my own cash. So in today's video, I'll be showing you the 10 new features that actually make a difference, all of its pitfalls that I've found so far, and of course, whether or not you should be spending your money on it at this point in time. First, let's start off with the good. I've just spent the entire day testing out every feature of the drone, goggles, and the motion controller because, well, I haven't flown with a motion controller in quite a while now. But thankfully, from all this testing, I've found that there are 10 things that I think are massive improvements from the last generation of Vada, and also some features that are just downright new and innovative. Starting off with this little guy, the Motion Controller 3. I was super skeptical of this thing at first as I found the limits of the other motion controller, the motion controller 1, the one that came with the first Avada, I found those limits way too quickly. However, I'm pretty stoked to be able to say that after flying with this, this is actually probably the first time that I can ever say I am okay with the DJI combo coming with one of these controllers. It's got enough buttons and wheels all on it that once you actually lock your brain onto what needs to be pushed for what, it becomes really intuitive and easy to fly with. So easy that I'm 100% confident my fiance, who has no idea how to fly FPV, can take it out for a spin and have a load of fun, but also not too limited that a seasoned pilot like myself would feel trapped too much. Of course, I'd love to fly with the remote controller instead of this, but we'll be talking about that very shortly. Continuing on with my mini rave about the motion controller though, there's actually a new mode that brings more of what FPV is all about to an inexperienced pilot. So far, I've used this mode to mess around a lot as it's really satisfying to play with, but equally, I've also found it super useful for getting a very specific type of FPV shot that is usually pretty difficult to pull off smoothly with a normal controller. It's called Easy Acro Mode and literally allows you to perform flips, rolls, and 180 degree yaw drifts past the subject with the flick of a joystick. The flips and rolls are more for the fun side of things, but that's like a really cool feature that now anybody can experience what it's like to flip or roll in FPV, pretty hard to do beforehand. But the 180 degree drift is actually something that I can see being useful for beginners looking to get some epic cinematic shots that are just different from following. Okay, enough about the controller. Let's talk Avada 2. Starting off with what I thought was only gonna be a slight increase in performance, but has actually turned out to be much more than I expected. When we were first introduced to the Avada one, we had the introduction of O3, which was a pretty damn good looking camera for what it was. Now, however, we've literally got the same sensor that is in the DJI Osmo Action 4. Yeah, the camera, the Air 3, and the Mini 4 Pro. That may not seem like a big leap up, but the fact that we are now literally recording with an Action 4, without the extra weight in this thing, is just crazy. To take it a step further, we're even getting spoiled with a color profile that I am so much more familiar with and happier to have, D-Log M. It makes post-processing way easier than working with D-Cinelike, which we had on the previous Avada. It gives us way more flexibility to play with and more information to shift around in the gray. Keeping on trend with the video side of things though, there is also a fairly underwhelming and probably overlooked feature that was upgraded on this new Avada 2. I'm not sure about you, but I've caught myself out honestly hundreds of times at this point where I've forgotten my SD card for the drone or if it's full of footage that I can't delete because, well, it's got an old project on it. Whatever it is, it makes it so I can't film any more footage that day on the drone. The original Avada had a respectful 20 gigabytes of internal storage, which, hey, that would be helpful in a true moment of weakness, but the new Avada 2 has more than doubled that by going up to 46 gigabytes of internal storage, which when recording in 4K60 should get you around 40 minutes of footage. So if you're like me and you only have the one battery for the drone, that's honestly gonna be more than enough storage for an entire session out. Speaking of the battery though, DJI finally took a page out of their own book and implemented this lovely enclosed in-body battery system, super similar to that of the Air 3. Funnily enough, the battery itself is actually smaller in capacity than the original Avada's battery, but that doesn't affect the flight time in any negative way. In fact, that's the sixth feature, the flight time. It's improved by five minutes according to DJI, reaching up to 23 minutes, which for one battery in an FPV drone is kind of a bit of an insane claim. I've found that I get a good reliable 15 to 18 minutes of constant flying, depending on how much I stop and you know hover or look around or if I'm boosting around in sport mode or whatnot, 
Put simply, the battery definitely doesn't feel like it's lacking in flight time and I reckon I'll probably end up picking up another one to add into my arsenal. Then the final actual helpful thing that's been improved with the drone itself is something that I hated with the first one. No joke, if you haven't heard an original Avada out in the wild, count yourself lucky. You're saving your ears from genuine torture and it's actually a massive reason that I truly stopped flying the original Avada anywhere people were nearby to me. I'm very happy to report that we've now gone from this sound to this. So much better, oh my gosh. That now leaves us with the Goggles 3, possibly one of the most impressive and interesting parts of the entire combo. Firstly, the diopters have been radically improved, widened, and now display a really neat digital dial inside of the Goggles screen to actually show you what you're set to. I've gone from struggling to get focus on even one specific part in the Goggles 2 to now having every single corner of the screen's in crisp focus with pretty much no vignetting. Honestly, combine this new clarity with the new sensor and it's feeling like an even bigger leap forward in terms of a viewing experience. Then to add some more sweet sugar to the mix, we've got a fairly unusual but literal game-changing modification to the Goggles 3. In the past, I've referenced the Goggles 2 as being the most comfy fit for my face in particular. I know some people don't agree with that, that's fine. But they still are, for me, in regards to the standard design, the most comfy. What's happened here now, however, is uh, DJI have pushed innovation forwards. And yeah, I know that sounds very cheesy. They've, uh, they've essentially recreated the wheel, actually. Normally, this would suck. And honestly, I would normally say stick to what's worked in the past. But I'm really glad they didn't this time around. This adjustable forehead pad here and flappy... I don't even know what you want to call that. It's kind of like a faceplate, right? This flappy rubber thing. These two things are honestly some of the best things that DJI have come out with since the release of the O3, and that's saying quite a lot. The pressure that you once felt like all over your face and over your nose is now being replaced with more of a floating feeling. Like yes, this hair does push up against your forehead, but this is so much more of a universally comfortable place to have it, and then the rest of it just kind of conforms to whatever face shape you've got. It's really smart. Now, that's especially true for the final feature that is actually surprisingly helpful. With all the hype recently around Apple's Vision Pro, I think the standards have been raised pretty significantly in the VR and AR space, and well, the Goggles 3 have taken a bit of a stab at this for themselves. They've introduced these two little cameras at the front here, and they can be activated by a double press of the controller or just a double tap on the side of the goggles. What that does is it pops up a live view of exactly what these cameras are seeing and kind of acts like two eyes for you. The big difference here though happens to be that, well, the field of view is very, very cropped. It allows you to kind of see through the goggles and be able to interact with your surroundings. There's a few modes, all of which do varying different things, but for the most part, this has quickly become a much faster way to watch your drone launch, make sure you aren't gonna hit anyone or anything, and then easily pop back into full FPV view to go and do the rest of your flight. I have to admit though, it does seem a little bit behind in terms of the technology, like it, it could be way better. We have MetaQuest 3 and these great headsets, this isn't quite it, which is really a good point to switch things up. Up until this point, I'm pretty sure that every single video that I've watched on the Avada 2 has been from creators who have sent the combo for free. Now, I have complete respect for them taking it on and this is by no means an accusation of dishonesty from anyone, but I do believe, no matter what, even for myself, if you get something sent to you for free, there will always be a small level of unknown bias as you simply haven't had to spend the money yourself. So, with that being said, and this Avada 2 combo being entirely bought by myself, I've got some pitfalls to talk about that I haven't heard anywhere else yet. Okay, so I had to spend a solid hour online today searching up what actually works with what in DJI's FPV lineup. And if you aren't aware of the state that it's in right now, let me just tell you, it's pretty terrible. As of currently, we've got mixed information coming out from everywhere. I mean, take GetFPV's website as our first example. If you head to the Goggles 3 page, you'll see that it explicitly states that these Goggles 3 work with DJI 03. And you can tell it's not a typo because it's literally mentioned not just once, but twice in two completely separate parts of the page. Then we head back to DJI's official site where they're telling us that the Goggles 3 are only compatible with the Avata 2, Air 3, and Mini 4 Pro, which for me at least, are indeed the only three options available within the settings of the goggles. 
Then for a second example, if we head through to Potato Jet's video, you'll see what he says about compatibility. But the downside of it is there's some compatibility issues. I know you can't use these goggles for like the DJI 03 air unit and like the previous air units, but DJI told me that they're gonna be doing a firmware update in like a month after release or so, where basically you could use the previous version of the controller and motion controller and goggles to the previous one on this new drone. That means if you're like me and you own the original remote 2 for the original Levada already, there is possibly no point in buying the new Remote 3 that is advertised for the Avada 2. Instead, maybe we should be waiting for this update that makes this hair compatible with this. The same story goes for O3 air units as well. If you do have them, then there's potentially no reason for you to own a pair of the Goggles 3, no matter how much better they are, because they just might never be compatible. My big issue is to do with the fact that the moment you go back to see what the official DJI site says, we're left with no speculation to expect any future compatibility at all. And the only equipment that's actually said to work with the Avada 2 is their new Remote 3, which I don't have because it's another couple of hundred dollars or whatever, and the Goggles 3. It's really just confusing, it's frustrating, and it really leaves me in a bit of a pickle as to whether I should sink more money into buying the Remote 3 so I can fly in manual mode, or whether I should wait for some rumored future update. So that now brings us to the big question. Should you actually be buying this brand new drone combo? Look, the way I see it is the same as a builder buying a new drill for his toolkit. The builder, let's call him Bob. I know, very original. He buys a new drill that doesn't work with any of his current drill bits, but he's heard that there's going to be some magical drill bit that fits them all together seamlessly in the future. On the off chance that Bob was pranked and the magical drill bit never arrives, He's got two options, sell the brand new drill that he never used or buy into the same brand's drill bits so they will work together. This is literally the exact same with DJI right now. If you buy this combo here and the Goggles 3 are never made backwards compatible, then well, you have no choice but to buy into their new O4 ecosystem. That means for any pilots who already own DJI O3 products, unless you're prepared to reinvest and switch everything over to O4, in case of no Goggles update, then don't buy this combo until you know the compatibility is confirmed and actually executed by DJI. The only people who should actually be purchasing this Avada 2 combo is either a beginner who hasn't yet invested into FPV at all and we're looking for an easy place to start, this is the perfect choice. Or for someone who is wanting to upgrade their entire video system to the latest and greatest O4 transmission. If neither of those people sound like you though, at least until the compatibility haze clears, I wouldn't be buying this combo. If what you're looking for though is something more affordable, even smaller, and super cinematic, then I don't think that you'll want to look much further than this little guy here. Watch this video next and honestly, you'll see exactly what I mean. See you there.